Hello class, this is section 6.3 and in this video we are going to introduce finite difference methods for approximating the heat equation. So here we have the familiar one-dimensional heat equation with homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions and an initial condition. Let us now try to find the finite difference approximation of this equation we shall use the forward difference approximation for the time derivative and we shall use a center difference approximation for the right hand side um, whoops I switched the x and t terms here there should be an x and there should be a t t and x there you go all right so we have here an approximate difference approximation um, let me change this to squiggly lines to emphasize that fact that the, this, this isn't exactly the same as the heat equation but it is something close and we have an error for this equation and that's simply the error of the left side minus the error of the right side or, or you can have the error of the right minus the error of the left too it makes no difference the sign of the error is pretty inconsequential this is what the error is precisely it's the delta of t over 2 times the second derivative of t um, with respect to x and some unknown eta 2 between t and t plus the delta minus k over 12 delta x squared and uh, this fourth derivative which depend on the c terms that lie between x and x minus delta and x x plus delta the error is not going to be too the exact form the error isn't going to be too important for our purposes but please note that it depends really on the delta t and the delta x squared. So these determine how small your error is really. Now the point of these difference approximation methods is that we change a continuous problem into a discrete one. So we care not about functions that change continuously, but functions that change in discrete jumps. That's why you're going from t to t plus delta and x from x plus delta. So let's introduce the mesh. It's a lattice that covers all the points that we care about in our finite difference approximation. So let's first draw the x terms. So we start with an x naught, and this is going to be equal to zero. So remember that our boundary conditions go from zero to L. So we let our x naught start at zero. Then we have x1, x2, and so on until we reach xn which is equal to L. So there's going to be some other points in between which I'm not drawing. And let's also consider the t-axis. So this is going to be the x-axis and this is going to be the t-axis. And we're going to have t naught here which is equal to 0 as well. Uh, let's be, let me draw that a little bit correct, correctly. Straight on. t0, t1, t2 and so on. And that represents the jumps in time. And of course, there's like a bunch of other stuff in between. So this is your mesh. And the point is that we start at x0 equals 0. And then we increment all the x's by the delta x. This is x2 is 2 delta x and so on. Until we get to xn equals n delta x, which is equal to L. So we set n so that n delta x is exactly equal to l and for time uh, we do the same thing so t0 is just time 0 t1 is going to be delta t t2 is equal to 2 delta t and this time time doesn't end so time can go on forever we'll just say in general that tm is equal to m delta t so we don't care about continuous jumps in our function we care about their values on this mesh instead and this simplifies the problem just a little bit. So let's look again at our equation. It turns out that there's a way to simplify this. Uh, let's copy and paste that. Copy it down. All right, so we have this equation. But this time, uh, let us consider what happens if we move everything, move all the delta t and delta x terms to the left. So we just get rid of everything here. So we have a k delta t over delta x squared term in the left. And it's going to be 
make our life a lot easier if we can just replace this thing, this term here, with an S. Just do simplify notation. We call this S, and S is actually equal to K times delta T over delta X squared. So this is going to be our difference equation. And let's um, use let make another notational change. So let um, U tilde be a solution to the approximate heat equation. And let's apply the notation Ujm to be the value of that approximate solution at xj and at tm. In that case, what would happen is that our approximate equation becomes this. If we set x star and t star to be xj and tm, and we have a relationship between the uj's for the points on the mesh. So once we solve for this equation, we can figure out the points of the, the solutions for the approximate solutions at all the points on the mesh. But obviously, uh, we need to start out somewhere. And this comes, this comes from our initial condition. If you may remember, our initial condition was ux0 equals fx. But in the language of our UJMs, this simply can be written down as uj and time 0, so 0 over here, is equal to f taken at xj. And this gives us um, all the values of m equals 0. And looking at our equation over here, if we know the values for m equals 0, we can get the values for m plus m equals, uh, so m plus 1. We can get the values for what, time 1. And once we have all the values of time 1, we can get the values of time 2. Once you get all the values of time 2, we can get the values of time 3, and so on. And this gives us approximate solutions for everywhere on this mesh. 